Hello. Welcome to Battleground, our new series on war games. War gaming was once aptly called by H.G. Wells, chess with a thousand pieces. I rather like that. All the model soldiers that you're going to see are just like chessmen, and every move they make is strictly governed by the rules. The rules themselves are designed to recreate the battleground conditions of that period. You can fight all sorts of war games. You can even use computers. You can play in any historical period that appeals to you. A game can last a couple of hours or a couple of weeks and can look as simple or as ornate as you make it. And you do make it. You create your own terrain. You buy the models. You paint them. But please don't panic, because war gamers really are a friendly lot. And anyway, you can always borrow a battalion. In the series, we're going to look at some famous battles to show you a war game based upon each one. We'll use the right armies, and we'll play it over the same ground, in miniature, of course. But remember, it is not a reenactment. It's a war game. And we may very well reverse history. And that often happens. Edge Hill. It was the first major battle of the English Civil War. It was a time when men trailed pikes and shouldered muskets. Charles I had raised his standard in Nottingham and was heading for London when south of Warwick he encountered a parliamentary army led by the Earl of Essex. The king took his position on the ridge of Edge Hill, just here, leaving the lower ground, and I may say the inferior ground, to Essex. In numbers, they were pretty evenly matched, but Essex was waiting for reserves and didn't attempt to close. Eventually, Charles ordered his troops to move down the hill, and the armies faced each other across half a mile of open country. Both were in the usual military formation, infantry here in the center, artillery, cavalry on each flank, here, 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 here. The battle was a classic of the pike and musket period. First, there was an exchange of gunfire. No one ran away, and so the cavalry and then the infantry engaged. It's called a melee. The Royalist cavalry was led by the dashing Prince Rupert of the Rhine, and he swept the parliamentarian cavalry from the field and chased them for miles. The Royalists were doing very well when Essex revealed his cavalry reserves who advanced round the now unprotected infantry flank, reaching the royal cannon. They might well have captured the king, but the royalist cavalry returned in the nick of time. And finally, the infantry, by now exhausted, well, it simply went home. The king claimed a victory, but in fact, Edge Hill was more a stalemate. This is the map of our battleground, showing the main features of the terrain. Red on the right for the Royalists, blue on the left for the Parliamentarians. The plain blocks are infantry, the two colour blocks cavalry. Those with a gun pattern are artillery. These are in fact standard symbols. You can see that our players have chosen to set up their troops in exactly the same position as 1642. The Royalists on the ridge, the Parliamentarians on the low ground. Uh, in fact, for this period and given this terrain, they'd have been hard put to, to do anything else and still have a chance of winning. This is the terrain. It's built to scale, and each model represents 20 men. Now, in this opening move, both players are beginning their advance. Before the game, they wrote their battle orders for their own troops and established the caliber of their units. Regular, elite, or raw, using dice. They can countermand orders, but it does take time. Duncan McFarlane is a very experienced war gamer. Professionally, he's a school librarian in Hull, and today he's commanding the Royalists. Also from Hull, John Tilson, commanding the Parliamentarians. He's an inspector for a dairy. I hope it's left at home today, so you don't get any extra for fighting. Because of the scale, players have to measure move distances. The models can travel only as far as real soldiers could in a real battle in any given time, so that time itself is scaled down. Wargamers have to know their history, about weapons, tactics, in fact, anything that could affect troop morale and so disciplines. 
chance factors such as weapon accuracy, morale and reaction are all controlled by a dice. I don't know what it is in the points of these pipes. I don't do any of this organ. Yeah, you leave those there to two organ anyway. That's my movement finished. That's mine as well. Right, artillery fire then. The big guns. Well, have the first shot if you don't mind. That stick measures the range. This one's going to be a field of fire. Yes. Let's aim at that pipe on there. Uh, any particular figure? Um, over the officer with the pistol. Uh, right, this is the dice for the windage. Six, oh, so it's bang on the target. Or the minus. bounce. Six. Six in the blue section. Well, it's very good firing, but you've missed everything. What? Everything. Oh, great. The gunners are drunk on this. Like lost Sunday morning. Ah, uh, this gun. On to the purple pike column there. Lord boots. Let's put it over the flag. Over the flag? This is the windage. Two going to the right. A little bit more. That's mm. it. The blue uh, element. The dice angles. will bounce. One. It's one in the red. Misses Eric again. 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 God's blood. With both flanks oh, in position to charge. I think you'll go for the centre. Yes. I think we will pound your lifeguards into submission, I think. Oh. Yes, he is. Two dice. Again, the first for windage, which is cannonball deflection, and the second for bounce, which means just what it says. The dice throw relates to one of the four colours on the stick, and casualties will be under the appropriate colour. Well, it's all marked, as indeed you saw. And the muskets, fall of shot. Three. 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 White. White. I think we're all you get one, two musketeers, so one in each unit. Oh. That gun? Yes. Presumably, you, the same time. you don't like my friends. <laughs> when did you go? Four. Four of shot. In the blue. In the blue. Well, you've got three out of this regiment. A lucky shot. Oh, yeah. good, Mm. Any more? That is it. This is a short range weapon, so. Yeah. All right, that's it then. Right, let's test the morale of the cavalry units that have come within charge reach. Troop morale is only part circumstance. Is there support? Is the general there? The rest is luck. So, dice, three this time. These two cavalry units are close enough to charge. But if morale is too low, they'll be undisciplined and they may run the other way. Right, 13, I'll plus one for every friendly unit within 15 inches. So that puts me up to 14, 15, 16, see this one through the gap here, 17, 18 for this black and musket unit here. I get one for being uphill, which is 19, and Prince Rupert himself is with that unit, which plus is three. So that's up to 22. Now, reductions, I don't know if any of your troops are within 50. No, you're out, so there's no reductions, so... They have an A-class morale grade, so they will do an uncontrolled advance. Right. So that's an automatic charge next move. And that'll be a compulsory. Well, this will be the second possible cavalry charge. We have ten there, so that's... Friendly units within fifteen. There's one, two, three. Three. Put you up to thirteen. Thirteen. C class, uh, you aren't, you are within 15 inches, aren't you? Uh, yes, two units. Which is down to 11. 11. Well, you're not going to go into C class control okay. advance there, so they will be okay. So they'll counter charge them. Right, move two. Um, these cavalry charges are compulsory moves, so shall we leave those and do the infantry first and come back to them 
Okay. Later. All right. I'm off the hill now, if you want to pluck up courage and come forward. That's what I'm waiting for you to do. You bet he's been waiting for that. He's managed to draw Duncan's troops off the hill rather than go to meet them, you know, which would have been to the royalist advantage, and I think Duncan's going to be very sorry. That's the old infantry. Yes. Right, well, this is a compulsory charge, which will have to be on that unit, which is the nearest. Um, um, yeah, there's about 17 and a half inches between, 17 inches between us, so if we go 8 and a half enough. inches forward... Both men will have ordered support for this charge. Down here. Okay. Okay. Is that where you meet your doom? Ah. These units have support orders, so we'll move forward behind the charge. You'd be really my orders. By the way, a uh, um, melee is just a term for a, a punch-up. The written orders brought them into range. The dice established that they would go in, and now the dice will decide the outcome. Right, the same thing on the other flank, then. Mm -hmm. They'll use a chart for these melees. You saw the green one they use for the morale test. This one gives a mean average number of casualties based on the number of men fighting. The dice throw, again, provides the chance element, so a small troop could triumph. Support orders here. Same with these. And in fact, I'll move these muskets forward because I couldn't with some of the cavalry in the way. Right. Right, right, is that the movement? That's it. We'll fight the melee. Shall we do this uh, one first? Yes. Most important. Yeah, well, I'll have the best chance here. So. <laughs> Right, how many figures have you got fighting there? Two, four, six, seven. Including the uh, gentleman himself, Mr. Ramsey? Yes, well, I've got eleven. No, I haven't. I've got ten there. Ten, so. Shall I have my hack first? Yes. Yep, no, no. Um, I've thrown uh, a nine. So that's ten fighting. Um, throwing a nine, you lose two men dead there. Two. I don't put them here. All right, you want hack back then? All right. Here it goes. Oh, very good. Two ones. Very good. Could be better. That's what, seven fighting, is it? It is, yes. Uh, seven with a two. <laughs> you don't kill any at all, I'm afraid. Just none, quite, at all. none at all. Quite just. It's impossible. <laughs> right. right, so that, uh... Must be a route yes, for you there. It's hard luck. So, Not sure if Duncan so means that. I can use terrible dice. Shall I hack first again? Yes, I think. Oh, yeah. Ten fighting once more. And I'm throwing four. Ten men out of four is only one casualty for you there. A chance to get me on back here, I think. Oh, God. Um, how many 11. of you are fighting? It's two, four, six, eight, twelve. Ten, twelve. Three dead. Three, Three dead. So you've routed me there. Yes, that was one oh dear. to me. Three, that's a definite... Uh, so route. that's it, then. You route there, and I route here.
which are you nasties? Uh, I think I'll get me on back with some musketry, I think. All right, well, I've nothing that can fire muskets, because everything's moved to full move. All right, we'll start off with the dragoons, I think. Just in the field, yeah, half a moon. in range there, are you? Just see, I think a few are. That stick is another range device. The dark colour, short range, into the lights, uh, it's long. Yes. Fire those two overhead, oh. fire up there. Five, right. five, five. Five. Right, throw your dice. Five, throwing... Seven. Uh, is one? Yeah. yeah. One. So, take that one off. Right. Now to, uh, give your lifeguards the cut moments. Right. All in long range, 12. Okay. Good again? Yep. Right. 12 men firing, throwing. There's a lovely 12. And that kills a very nice three figures. Three dead. John used a similar chart for musketry as for the melees, and its casualty figures are based on the number of men firing together with the dice throw. That's all my firing, as I see. Now we're into the cannon again. Right. Do you want to fire first? No, you can. I think I can now fire these two guns. The men in front have gone yes, down the hill. Yes, they have that there. What's so the target? I'll fire it over at your cavalry. Uh, um, no one? At those, yes, that unit there. Right, the dice for the windage. A one, oh. so that's... Over to my left. Right, what do I need? Five or six, I think. Mean, a bit of luck. Oh dear, one. one. What's Is it red? Any kills? No. Nope. Missed Bounce. everything. Bounce. Missed. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's very nice. The other gun? Oh, I, I don't think Duncan should fire that other gun. No. I have to be onto that because. Hollis's regiment? Um. Any particular. Actually, I'm not going to risk firing this. Because with everything yes. in the green section, an automatic kill, if I deviate, you will kill, I will kill my own people. So I, right. I shall sure abstain from firing there. Right. So it's uh, your firing. I think you can guess my target. Yes. yes. Uh, as I'm allowed to fight any period through the move. Can You're firing your before, right before the infantry to penetrate right. the beginning. John's reminding Duncan that although the players move a bit at a time, all the different actions in any one move are understood to be happening simultaneously, as in fact in real life. For windage, one, one is still over the lifeguards. If you get a white or a blue sector, all the shot. So four in the white. white. Um, Into your lifeguards, which you don't want so to. So you'll get two men in this regiment, two pikemen and the musketeer in this regiment on the second bounce of the shot. That's very good. I've got him already. <laughs> so I'll take uh, this one off. And two in this pike regiment will come off as well. Right. Again, the lifeguards. Yes, John really is going for that lead regiment, the lifeguards. They were the first of the guard regiments of the British Army and he's trying to break the morale. For windage again. Two, to deviate a little. We'll still be on the lifeguards and on the screen unit here. Two, two is in the red. So you're going to get again two musketeers in the lifeguards here. That's good. That's good. They're taking a lot of hammer, aren't they? The lifeguards, lifeguards, and I believe that's all. That's all your fire is, yes. So that's the position. Remember, the Royalists are red on the right and the Parliamentarians blue. You can see that neither cavalry wings are looking good. The Royalists nearest to us have been broken and they're running off. On the other flank, it's the Parliamentarians who are in trouble. Prince Rupert is giving chase, so his forces are not going to be much help later on. Right, then the compulsory moves first. Um, all your cavalry will route back. Yes. Right, my indiscipline mob. Uh, 12, 
Twenty inch rules move, isn't it? And my unit will have to follow you up here. They rub that twenty inches in. Right, they'll be okay there. Okay then. So they have right, to take that's on. the compulsor on this side. So we have down the other flank. I'm in route. And these come back twenty inches. Which brings them down here. Now these will be swept away as the cavalry gallop back through them. They're out to there. And your pursuers should be in the rear of the infantry yes, now. Yes, they'll have to stop at the infantry. Right, that's the compulsory. So it's charges to declare if you've got any. Uh, just the one, Duncan. Uh, the, yes. John's going to charge that left flank. It will leave Duncan quite unsupported in the centre. So you better watch it. Shouldn't think you'll have any problems with me now. Eight. No, you'll go in on that. Right, well, if that's the only charge, I think it must be. Nothing else can charge. No, everything else is um, uh, charging backwards. I'd have time to do nothing but turn to face you, so... Well, that's the remnants of Duncan's cavalry. He's been caught on the hop. You should hit me. Well, move is adequate to do that. It's a wheel. Right then, the normal moves for the infantry. Normal moves. are in route, that's a compulsory move back. Right. Um, they're going to sweep away these musketeers too. Right. So uh, 20 inches brings them behind this gun. Okay. Right, that's the, I don't think we need to bother to move those, they're all being they will pursue swept quite away off the board, aren't they? So, so uh, charges, any charges yeah. just the one. On the Having thrown all his firepower into the centre, John now wants to charge. He's hoping to route the lead unit, who in turn will cause the unit behind to follow suit. Nine. You'll charge. So, I'll uh, throw a reaction test to see if I can receive your charge or even counter charge. If I... Duncan has a problem. His own troops are running past each other the wrong way, and morale is affected. And that centre unit, although the lifeguard has a calibre second to none, it has been shot to pieces, and although not routed, it's not exactly moving forward. If Duncan's centre collapses through bad morale, there's not a thing he can do. And that'll be the end for him. Um, and in fact, on their route, which I think is 12 inches, they're inevitably going to sweep away this other unit. They'll That's go the right back through it, and that'll route too. So, you know, I, I don't see how I can win this now. I think I may as well concede the game to you. So, you see, this time, we have reversed history, with a decisive win for the parliamentarians. In spite of Prince Rupert's success in that one charge, Duncan was pressed into a position from which there was no escape. And John, in spite of losing that first melee on his left flank, cleverly drew the royalists from their superior position up on the ridge, pounded away with his guns, and then when the morale of Duncan's troops was suitably and justifiably at its lowest ebb, he pulled a flanker on the remaining Royalist cavalry, putting his troops into the comfortable position of being able to fire into the lifeguards without hindrance. They couldn't fight back. They had no support and no time. But even if they had their time, the morale was destroyed. Well, that's all for this week, and I hope you've enjoyed the program. I hope you'll join us next time when we will be looking at Waterloo. Goodbye.